Hey guys, I have created a new sound set for the Cog Wave State with around 80 performance patches of nine world famous productions from the synth pop era of the 1980s. And I've chosen bands like Deepesh Mode, Human League, Jean Michel Jarre. and a lot more from that time period. You see, I even took some of your requests from the comment section of my last video. I will put the download link in the description of this video and I've also attached instructions how to play all these keyboard parts so that might make it easier for some of you guys to immediately start jamming with my sounds. I just can't get enough was the last Depeche Mode single written by Vince Clark in 1981. For those who didn't know, Vince Clark is an old schoolmate of Andrew Fletcher um, and both formed the band Composition of Sound in the late 70s, I think. A bit later, Martin Gore joined that band and even a bit later in 1980, Dave Gahan joined that band too to take over the vocal part and ta-da, the birth of Depeche Mode, Vince Clark left. <laughs> Vince Clark left the band in 1981 to work on his own stuff. To get a bit nerdy, on this song you hear a lot of Roland Jupiter 4, Moog Prodigy, Yamaha CS5 and the Cork KR55 drums and other drum sounds were added on the ARP 2600 and the Mini Cork 700S. A lot of names. The first sound is the intro and the worst, worst, worst patch of that song. Uh, in the left hand you have the bass sequence, the drums and another sequence on top and in the right hand you have the lead sound that you can switch with a mod wheel um, to become the verse sound. The next one is the pre-chorus with another sawtooth lead sound. This sound is the post-chorus. It's another, even another lead sound. followed by the next part of the post-chorus by another lead sound. You see with the mod wheel, with the modulation wheel, you can then switch the lead sound, yeah, kind of a square lead sound, you can switch it to the brass sound that leads then later to the chorus. What else do we get? We have the bass sound on the whole keyboard. Okay, we have the pulse lead sound made on the Prodigy. Beautiful sound. I really like it. Okay, the next one is the lead sound from the intro and the verse, and you can switch the sound with the modulation wheel. did not bring the big success. Human League's label 
um, Virgin Records sent the band to the American producer team, producer team Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. They were busy with Janet Jackson's album Control at that time. And they also worked a lot with Prince and the SOS band. And I think you can definitely hear their influence on this song in the nice R&B flavor, in the bass, in the beat and the chords, of course. Okay, this is the first human patch and we start with the drums. You have to go one octave lower, press the C and go back again, one octave higher and it's almost a complete patch. We have the, the Moog bass, let's say, and Jupiter 8 brass and the DX, DX layer on the top. that song such a great R&B pop song actually for that time not only for the time but you know what I mean the next patch is an FM piano layer this is actually the Jupiter 8 pad sound together with a, with an FM a piano layer The next patch is this very warm Jupiter 8 brass pad sound. Wow. Jar started sending out his song Oxygen on demo tapes to the record companies, they often would just send them back to him. They thought they had malfunctions because of all that noise coming from the VCS3 analog synth. He worked a lot with the ARP 2600, which were used for the melody brass sounds, I guess. And then he used the RMI harmonic synthesizer and a Fafisa and an eminent organ and I'm sure he played all these flaming pad sounds, the string pad sounds on this track because these two are the only polyphonic instruments used on that album. This is the, the oxygen patch and um, it contains four layers and a lot of sounds that you can switch with a sample knob. It's without drums because I need to really need all the four layers for um, all these different kinds of of lead sounds that uh, we have to use for this song. So with a sample knob you can switch the lead sounds. And we have the, the bass sequence and another sequence on top and added to that we have the eminent organ, kind of a flanging organ sound for playing the chords. Wow, nice. I really 
love it. Okay, the next sound, uh, let me look, is the Jupiter 8 brass on the full keyboard. Sounds cool, huh? You can control the filter with the velocity and you can change the sound that has even a bigger pad um, behind the Jupiter 8 brass. Of course, this typical Jomsha Jar organ sound from the end 70s, begin 80s, this eminent organ with a flanger. Wow! Guys, if you like my video, Hit subscribe and the notification button because that will definitely help me to make a lot more of this content. By the way, if you are interested in even more wave state sounds, I made a complete sound set called the Sounds of the Trevor Horn Era with around seven performance patches of world famous productions by him and productions from that time. Back to the 80s. I love to say that sentence. This song, What is Love, written by Howard Jones and Bill Bryant, was produced by Rupert Hine, um, who worked with big names, prog rock bands like Rush and Zaga. And it was released in 1983 on the first album of Howard Jones called Human Slip. Humans Lip. I was a huge fan of Howard Jones and I even tried to imitate his haircut in my early days and I'm very glad that I don't have a picture from the time. Howard Jones used the Roland Jupiter 8 a lot on the track, I think on that whole album and a Moog Prodigy and the belts must have been created by a Yamaha DX7 I think. Okay, the first patch is this great sounding intro patch of the song. In the left hand you have the FM bass and the uh, kind of a storm effect and uh, another sequence on top and in the right hand you have this Jupiter 8 brass sound um, yeah the beautiful Jupiter 8 <laughs> And this patch is the verse sound. In the left hand you have the FM bass sound. In the right hand you have the pad. The next patch is from the second verse. It's, I think it's the the Prophet T8 that he played at the time. It's a, a two manual synthesizer, very rare from sequential circuits. And I think it's that synthesizer maybe mixed together on the record with an, uh, the DX7. This one is the chorus patch. In the left hand you have a quite big pad, in the right hand you have the Jupiter 8 brass that you can switch with the sample knob.
next sound is th this synced, very fat solo sound that is appearing in the middle eight, I think. The next sound is from the post chorus. To my ears, it's, it sounds like a synth clavinet with, um, with an octave layer under it, plus uh, the blowing noise of a pan flute. And the next patch is the synth clavinet for the whole keyboard. And the FM bass on the whole keyboard. And the Jupiter 8 brass on the full keyboard. You can uh, modify the decay with the shape knob, and you can, of course, control the filter cutoff with the modulation wheel. I believe this song, Don't You Want Me Baby, which was released in the winter of 1981, is the commercially most successful song of the Human League. It sold over 1.5 million copies. Philip Oki, the lead singer, was not too fancy about the sound of that song after it had been mixed anew, so he placed that song at the very end of the B-side of the album Dare. In an interview I read that the producer Martin Russians worked a lot with the Roland System 700, which is a really powerful modular system. Also Casio VL1 and M10 were used to add the typical um, new wave flavor. The drum machine was a Lindrum LM1 and you can definitely hear that on the snare drum and the bass drum sound. The first performance patch is the intro sound of this song. In the left hand you have the Prodigy bass melody sound. In the right hand you have the drums and this single note sequence and the pad. Who? Sounds like a lot. It is. This patch is for the verse of the song. In the left hand you have the drums, the bass sequence and the synth guitar. In, in the right hand you have the this kind of very vintage apian sound. Okay, let's see what else we have got. We have the pre-chorus.
the next patch is from the chorus of the song. We breathe. Uh, we have the the drums, the bass, and the the counter melody of of that part. The next patch is for the second chorus. We have the bass sequence, the counter melody, and the synth guitar in the in the left hand and. In the right hand, we can play the synth. Uh, we can play the, the pad. The next patch is for the second pre-chorus. We have this kind of chamber sound in the right hand. next sound is the prodigy sound from the intro for the for playing on the whole keyboard and this is the verse patch with the brass sound in the right hand This is the intro pad sound for playing on the whole keyboard. And the synth guitar, funky guitar on the whole keyboard. The song Don't Go was written by former Depeche Mode member Vince Clark for the British synth pop duo Yazoo with Alice Moyer and it was released in, I think, 1982. It then climbed up to the top five in the UK. When it came out in the 80s, I was instantly hooked. I believe that he used a sequential circuits Pro One for the melody part an ARP 2600 and a Mini Quark 700S. And if I would take a guess, I would say that the drums are a combination between a Roland TR-808 and the Pro One. The, the first sound of Don't Go is the intro sound with the drums and the bass sequence and the lead sounds on the right hand. Then we have the then we have the verse sound with the arpeggio in the right hand and drums and bass in the left hand. We've got the pre-chorus. And of course, the, this cool bridge with the drums bass again in the left hand and this um, sequence in the right hand. We've got the bass over the whole keys. shape knob you can control the decay. And we have this beautiful massive R pleat sound over the whole keys of course. I
remember that this song, Equinox, which was released in 1978, so two years after Oxygen, really hit me with that rhythmical pulse, the fat bass sound and the creamy melodic synth with the delay. And if I had a guess, I would say this is coming from a Yamaha CS60, which he owned at that time. Jean-Michel Jarre worked a lot with the Matrix Sequencer 250. It was custom made by Michel Geis, especially for him, and uh, was a huge machine, big like a refrigerator and horizontally built. The first page is almost the full Equinox sound, let's say. We have the bass sequence and another sequence on top. And you can control the filter of the bass with the shape knob. And additional to that, you can uh, add a second voice to the lead sound with a gate knob. But listen yourself. sample knob you can now switch from the synth brass to the organ sound. song and the next patch is the bass sequence with the arpeggios in the right hand and this patch is the synth brass sound the Jupiter 8 brass sound on the full keyboard And with the shape knob, you can control the filter. Released in 1980, another game refers to the name of the airplane that dropped the atom bomb over Hiroshima in 1945. There was also a misinterpretation of the title as some radio presenters thought that Enola Gay was related to the homosexual outing of the band members and started boycotting the airplay. OMD worked on the whole album organization with the Mellotron, the Korg MS-10 and the Roland CR-78 drum computer and they experimented a lot with tape echoes and radios which you can hear a lot on other productions like Made of Orleans. This is the intro patch from the song Enola Gay and in the left hand you have the, uh, the bass sequence and the, the drum computer and in the right hand you have kind of a transistor organ sound. This patch is from the 
second intro. In the left hand you have the big pad, in the right hand you have the this beautiful synth solo sound. And the lead sound from the bridge on the full keyboard. The next sound is the patch for the middle eight. This patch is kind of a vox organ sound on the full keyboard. the silence in 1990 played the demo version of the song on a harmonium and this version is actually quite slow and you can still find it here on YouTube on some channels. Um, later on Alan Wilder from Depeche Mode produced a faster version of the song with a producer called Flat, aka Mark Ellis who is known for his work with legends like U2, 30 Seconds to Mars and Erasure and the song became a top tenant in the Billboard charts. The first sound is the intro sound of the song. We have this bass sequence and another sequence on top. And we have the guitar sound in the middle of the keyboard. It's a bit tricky because we have 37 keys and it's not so much for this song, but it works. It works. So this is the Stratocaster sound and on the right side of the keyboard we have this vocal choir sound. And we have the verse sound with the bass sequence in the left hand and the vocal sound in the right hand. The next patch is the chorus sound. The next patch is for the second chorus. There's an additional Rizzo synthesizer bass sound underneath the bass sequence. And this is the bass sound on the whole keyboard. And this is the vocal pad sound for the chorus on the whole keyboard.
this is the sound for the outro with the um, resonant synth and the vocal pad in the left hand and of course the bass sequence and in the right hand you have the, the lead sound, synth lead sound. With the sample knob you can change now to the guitar sound. And this is the electric guitar sound for the whole keyboard. So that's it from me guys, have fun with the sounds, enjoy them, play around with them and write me a comment which sounds you missed or even maybe which kind of sound sets for the wave state you want to have in the future. So I hope to see you all in the next video.